Hello everybody, my name is Paul Abernathy and welcome to another episode of Master the NEC where we talk about the National Electrical Code. On today's episode, we're going to talk about exam prep root review. Now, what are we talking about? This is where the student looks at the question and can dissect or look for the trigger or the actual root of the question that helps them answer the question. How to maneuver the National Electrical Code. Now I've done a lot of training on how to utilize the code, how to do calculations, and, and, and how to prepare for an exam. We've done podcasts on the subject, we've done videos on the subject. Um, I even teach you how to do all the intricate calculations to help you pass exam. But one of the key components for passing exams is to be able to look at the question and utilize that question to actually help you answer the code question. Now, on an exam, there's going to be a certain number of questions that you just know the answer to. And you're going to move through those in a wave format. You're just going to answer those questions and you're going to move on. There's going to be another certain set of questions that you're going to have to think a little bit. And you need to use the question to your advantage. Now, all questions are generated in what we call a STEM. That's S-T-E-M. And in that STEM, you're going to have what's called the root or the trigger. And in there is going to give you something that might help you navigate to find it in the NEC, whether you're using the index or something in it that triggers you to something you might already know. For example, if you see the term panel board, you know it's talking about panel board. You might already know that it deals in Article 408. And so that kind of puts you already ahead of the game. So we're also going to talk about how you do what's called scanning. And really, you're scanning the bold texts of all the sections when it kind of gets you in the right area, but you don't really have a lot of information. The index didn't help you a lot, and it puts you in a certain area. You can use a scanning technique, uh, and sometimes you might use that scanning technique if it only puts you in the article, and you're like, okay, um, I'm in 680. I know I'm dealing with something with luminaires. I can't find it. So what you're going to do is you're quickly going to scan each section and look for triggers or root words that are all part of the stem of the question to help kind of get you in the location and we're kind of we'll go over that I'm also going to show you some free resources that are online uh, really one good free resource that has dozens and dozens of questions and exams uh, that allows you to take the exam over and over you should time yourself so what you really should do is set up your uh, alarm or your clock on your phone or, or and, and, and really time yourself so that you only have one minute to answer each one of these questions and try to answer these questions in one minute. Now, in today's example, we might take a little longer than one minute because I want to show you all the angles that you can use to use this online resource to help you better understand the code. So we're going to go a little slower. But when you're using this online resource, you really want to time yourself. And don't be down on yourself if you don't get it within the minute. Uh, reset it again and put it on another minute and try it again. Uh, but every time you go through these ex these quizzes online, uh, decrease your time. So if you're starting to find them in, in less than a minute, then drop it down to 45 seconds. Really start training yourself to be able to whip through this code. Uh, if you have something that take you a little longer, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. All right, so let's kind of go and look at some examples. All right, so here's your online resource. Now this is coming from a website called Electrician Exam practice tests that's with an s dot com and what it's doing is it is a great collection of exams you got elect electrician practice tests you got NEC practice tests you got NEC code questions you even have some electrical theory questions uh, and there's a lot of them and here you see there's there's 15 questions in this series uh, over here on the right you have all of the exams that you can run through uh, and you should go through all of them okay and so here in our example I just chose, I guess, quiz number 40. And we want to go through it. So in this case, we're going to look at this question. And we're going to show you how to take the stem. And what you see highlighted, that is called the stem. Okay. And for example, in here, you've got this is called the target or the trigger or the root, however you want to be. And also, closet storage space. And of course, minimum clearance and of course these are also your triggers because you're looking for these as you're looking up the question so we're going to assume that you don't already know that in this case you're going to be um, over in 410 because you're dealing with luminaires and you're dealing with closet now remember some of these questions might not be the greatest because they are free and they are online and sometimes the answer might not even be exactly accurate but the whole purpose here is to move you through the code book, to get you to understand it.
Now, if you answer it wrong, use the, the resource, the, the reference they give you in order to reverse look up the question and look for the triggers inside of the stem to help you say, well, what could I have done to help me answer this question? All right, enough talking about it. Let's do it. So what are we looking for here? Well, we're dealing with a surface amount of fluorescent luminaire. We're dealing with a minimum clearance requirement and a closet storage space. Okay, well, chances are we know that this is dealing with a closed closet storage space, but we don't necessarily know that as of yet, but we do know we're dealing with the luminaire because that's the stint, that's what's part of the question. So we're gonna go to the NEC and we're gonna go to luminaires first. So I'm, first of all, if you don't know, oh, I should remind you also, uh, you should create some flashcards. Take normal index cards, you can buy 500 at a dollar store for a buck, and on one side of the card, maybe you write Article 210. On the other side, you put branch circuits. That way you get kind of used to being able to just uh, quote these things. When somebody says, what is 300? Uh, then you're like, well, that's general requirements for wiring methods. And you kind of go through it. They go, well, what is chapter two? Uh, on one side, it says chapter two. On the other side, they will say wiring and protection. What's chapter one? General. Uh, that's how you kind of go through it. What's chapter five? Well, that's, that is special occupancies. You're training yourself to start learning all of these areas. It's just going to save you time as you go through the code. Okay, so what we want to do now is again is we're going to use these triggers and we're going to start with Luminaire and we're going to maneuver through the code. Now we're going to use the 2017 code, although remember that some of these online questions, they're probably going to be the 2014, but that's no problem. It's still going to be beneficial to use it. Okay, so we found branch circuits. Now we're going to look for the Luminaires because that was our one of our triggers. So we're going here and we're looking L... LM, uh, I didn't see anything uh, under that, okay, for branch circuits, all right, so nothing was there, we didn't know, I don't know why I was in branch circuits, I think I was supposed to go to luminaires, sorry, I got a little sidetracked, let me go down to luminaires, I don't know why I went to branch circuits, but, Okay, now you're going to be doing, now some people ask me, Paul, why don't you just use the search feature feature on your computer? Because you don't get the search feature when you take the exam. Why should I use the search feature? Okay, all right, I'm just going to flip through just like you're doing. All right, so we're going to look for luminaires because that's part of the question. Here's luminaires. Well, we already know that we can go to 410 for luminaires, so that kind of helps us out there. Okay, but here's closets, and there's really no other reference to closet, so we're going to have to go with closed closet, and of course, in this case, 14.16. So I want to write down 14.16. Now, I'm going to quickly scan and see if there's anything else to do with closets, uh, anything that, that might be beneficial to us. Uh, fluorescent, uh, you might look at fluorescent luminaire, uh, but incidentally, do I see anything else that sticks out? Uh, location. For luminaires, because we're all talking about closets, so at part two, we might write that down, and we'll just kind of put all this stuff together. Now, just to look up real quick, let's do let's do look up um, fluorescence, just to look it up to see. All right, so. Fluorescent luminaires. Okay, so here we got some other ones. Let's see, really, surface mounted. Is that part of our question? Okay, we'll go back to the question. Yes, surface mounted flore uh, fluorescent luminaire. So that's a third way to get you there. See how easy that is? So I'm going back to the code. So again, that's still 210.16. And most notably, A. So I know that I'm going to be in 410. I don't know why I say, I don't know why I keep saying 210. 410.16A. So let's go there and answer this question. We're time is of the essence. We're timing ourselves, but we got there. We're going to go down to the 16. And we're dealing in a closet, closed closet there. And we're going down, and we know that we said it's surface mounted fluorescent luminaire uh, in here and dealing with ceiling. So it's six inches, right there. Go back to the question real quick. We're answering the questions as we move on. 
and we go six inches we answer it there you go C2 move on next question it says for buildings or installations consisting of two two wire branch circuits the service the service disconnection means uh, having a rating not less than blank okay so you got a 30 100 a 60 or 50 the triggers here all right disconnection means uh, and in ratings okay so we're gonna look service disconnection means so what I'm probably gonna do is I probably know that I'm probably gonna be somewhere in 230 okay so well let's go to the code and let's go on and go we could or we could do what's called the scan method and we could go to 230 I just want to show you another way to do it if you were taking an exam and you wanted to do it this way I can go to 230 and if I go to 230 let me get these smaller then I could probably go here and say well disconnection means are in part four right here so I could quickly jump to part four and and get me down to where part four is and that's went too far here's part four okay and then the service is conductors uh, ratings and here's the ratings I'm just kind of going through it a little bit and keep going wait a minute that wasn't part four excuse me I don't know what I looked at that was part six my bad so I would have come to part six sorry about that disconnection <laughs> means uh, maybe I'm dyslexic today all right so I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the group uh, aspects of it and I see something that triggers it rating rating of the service disconnect look at the trigger of the question trigger of the question says rating service disconnection means we're all in the right area here right we're, we're all dealing with this application okay so we're going back to the code we're dealing with rating remember you're looking for trigger terms remember it says two circuit installation and here you go there's that two two wire brand circuits have a rating of not less than 30 amperes okay go back to the question is that one of the options yes it is one of the options here 30 amperes it matches all this information and there you go 230.79b if you look back to the code you'll see that it is 230.79b is exactly where we needed to be so I dissected this out of the stem remembering that we had some key triggers in here okay how we got there all right that's how we now that's how we did it using the scanning type of method right just kind of scanning it over and then seeing we're dealing with disconnection mean and using that thing but what if we didn't what if we wanted to use the index okay well we can do that too if we go down here and we're going to go down here and we're going to go to service disconnection means all right so let's go down here we'll see if we can get there that way that's the beauty of the index okay so again for those that say Paul why don't you use the search feature uh, because you're not going to be able to use that in an exam that's why I don't use it okay okay circuit the service disconnection means let's see if we have any if that's anywhere in here no service derived separate drive service cable service drop service entrance service entrance so I don't see anything except I do see service equipment under 230 which you know and then we're looking down and we see well here's the disconnection means got that and that is the part uh, six that we were we were kind of there if you will um, and so we're kind of that far um, did we get anything else involved ratings there you go there's a trigger and that's under the application of service equipment if we go back and look at it then you know server disconnection mean it's kind of one of those things you have to know that we're dealing with service equipment so this is a little harder way to get there but you could get there and that's going to take you right to 230.79 okay so that's just another way for you to get there okay uh, there's many ways to get there in the code that's just one all right so we answered that question let's go to another one all right so uh, the next one here it says wound rotor motor branch circuits must be protected using dual element fuses against short circuit and ground fault by a protective device 
uh, size no greater than blank of the full load current. Now, obviously, in this question, they have already decided for us. Okay, they've already decided they're, they're going to use dual element fuses. Okay, for the short circuit ground fault protection, and so we're dealing again with motors in a branch circuit, but we're mainly dealing with with the motor application. All right. All right, and I could show you a reverse way to do this, but let's go on and just do this. So what we want to do is we want to deal with them. We want to go to motors real quick and see if that's the route dealing with motors. Oh, went the wrong way. Okay. Motors. Here's a long one. Motors is a long one right here. It's a lot. 430. So we could use the method where we go through and just kind of boom, boom, boom and go through each one of them, or we can try to break it down. Okay, we've got here, we've got branch circuit. Notice how that sticks out a little bit further. That's in 430 part two. But you'll also notice that it says short circuit ground fault protection is 430 right there, and we're in part uh, four. Okay, one way to get there for part four. Do we see anything else that might help us um, in this application? Because there's a lot of information here. We got wound roller motors. That was in the question. Uh, well, we can maybe jot that down, but that might not be what we're dealing with in the question. Uh, so we're just kind of looking through a little bit, see if there's anything that we can help. Remember time of the essence on our exam? All right. So there. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick with what we knew here. We're going to go to 430. We're going to go to part five. All right, so we're going to go through it. We're taking an exam. You might already know that. Now here, you can also use this here. It's great. Okay, and you'll notice that it's dealing with branch circuit, short circuit protection, and you'll notice that it talks about there getting into part four. Okay, so we're going to go down to that part four. And your code book is a little easier. Me, you got to give me a second so I can kind of go through here and and kind of zoom a little bit here because I don't know where it is here. Okay. Motor short circuit, okay, right there. All right, so now we want to find out what that pro that protection is, okay? So it says to protect the device rating or settings and not exceed the values calculated in table 430.52 shall be used, okay? All right, and I don't see anything, so the trigger. So what are we looking for? Let's go back to the question. We're dealing with what? Wow, uh, wound rotor brand circuit. We're dealing with dual element fuses. Okay, here we're dealing with dual element fuses. We're dealing with short circuit protection. Okay, we've determined what table we need to use for that based on the FLC. So let's go to the code. Let's make this one easy. Here's the table. We have dual element. We have a wound rotor. What do we got here? 150. Okay. So let's go back to our question, see if that's one of our options, and it is. We select it, and there you go, 430.52. Uh, so you kind of see how we did this using motors. Now, we knew this was a motor, so that's how we went up in there, and we used the triggers, which what are we trying to determine here? We were trying to determine how to size the short circuit ground fault protection. So that was the trigger there. Uh, we'll end up on one more here. Um, it says... A, a smooth inner sur oops sorry it says a smooth inner surface with integral reinforcement within a raceway wall okay here's one where you take the example of the question you notice that are all of these are f l f n c's so in this question nothing in this stem is benefiting you what's benefiting you is the question so in this question it's a poorly worded one but here we know we're in LFNC. So what is LFNC? That's liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit. So what is that? So if I'm going to go to the code, then I could do a couple things here. I could go to the table of contents at this point, and I can look for, it's under the wiring methods, under chapter three, and I can look for the acronym here, and just kind of look through here and find the actual LFNC, okay? Let's go back and make sure it's LFNC. It is LFNC, all right? So we go back to the code. And what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with 
358, that's the article. But more importantly, we know to jump to 208. And that's what we want to get at 208. So that's where we want to go. Now, what else could we have done? Well, if we wouldn't want to go and start doing the skimming method, because the question is asking us about the smooth inner surface integral reinforcement with the wall. All right, well, I'd probably just, because I know that that's a small section uh, or a small article, so I'd probably go right there. But what would we want to do if we wanted to go further into the index? Now, what if we wanted to look under liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit and see what it says? So let's just do it. Again, we're preparing for the exam. We're taking our time. You're getting used to being able to flip back and forth, back and forth through the code and using. And that's what I'm trying to do here is teach you how to use the index, go and try to pick the best location that you can. So here you go. All right. So here is 356 article construction. Okay. Well, that's probably going to be under the construction. All right. Because we're describing how it's to be constructed. Um, and so, um, that's probably where we're going to be. So I would say you're probably in part three, but I can tell you 356 is really small. So let's just go to 356. We're pretty confident there. You might have, and you're taking your exam, you might have known the answer to this one already, right? And you just kind of moved on through it. All right. So let's get here. Let me make this a little smaller. Okay. So we're not looking, we're looking for something that has to do with the construction of it. All right. Number of doctors, Ben's construction. All right. And we're going to kind of go through and see what we're looking for. Let's kind of pull back here. We're looking for the triggers. We're looking for smooth inner surface, integral reinforcement. Okay. We're looking for those terms. Even this B, D, A, C, all these are triggers. So we're going back, we're taking this exam, and we're going to go back. And since this is a very small one, okay, we're going to go back and look from right here, okay, and see that any call out, boom, whoa, what does this say? The definition. All right, well, we got all different kinds. Well, there's the B, there's the A, there's the C. Uh, all right, we got, a, we got a bunch of information here. Wait a minute, what does this say? Smooth inner surface with integral reinforcing within the raceway walls. Wow. This one talks about core. Hey, it's nothing to do with my question. And this one says a corrugated internal. Now, smooth, that's the trigger. Go look at the example. We're looking for the smooth inner, All right? So that one's easy. At this point, you've answered this question, okay? You realize that you want the one with the smooth. So we're looking at for the B, the B type. So you go to the go to the exam question, and you're going to take B. And there you go, 356.2, item 2. And that's just simply how you do it, okay, and move through it. So in order to not make this you know longer than it needs to be, uh, I'll take us back to my intro, and we'll kind of discuss this a little bit. So look at the question. Try to dissect it. Now, if you're pre preparing for an exam, I want you, uh, let's go back to the browser. I want you to be able to use these resources. So I'm going to put down in the description the address to get to these online free exam questions, these, these quizzes. Um, and there's another thing I'm going to encourage you to do. Every time you look up one of these questions and you get into the code, I want you to have two different color highlights. I want you to highlight the actual um, section and then I want you to take a different color and I want you to highlight the answer okay that's what I want you to do all right so for example in this one uh, I'll give you let's let's go on and do this one so that we can kind of um, get the answer I mean how you highlight all right so where a duct heater is located above a suspended ceiling and in the width of the working space for the duct heater uh, must be not less than 20 30 you know, whatever the distance is so all these triggers so I'm looking for duct heater Okay, suspended ceiling, a working space, duct heater. Duct heater is my trigger. So I'm going to go to the internet, uh, the um, code, and I'm going to go. If I didn't know what duct heater's in, uh, that's a pretty significant description. So we'll go to duct heater, uh, and let's see if we can't find uh, ducts. Duct heater installation. Okay, so that's 424 part six. Okay, looks like that's where I need to be in duct heater. So I'm gonna go to 424. 
and I'm going to go there and I'm going to go to part six and of course you can make it smaller or whatever so you know which part you're in and I think I went too far obviously <laughs> and duck teeters okay so now look for your trigger look for the triggers let's go back to the question you have a 30 inch 32 24 18 these are your triggers duct heater suspended ceiling working space all those goodies we're trying to look for okay go back to the code question to the code book all right remember all of those little triggers what are we looking for for duct heaters all right installation okay uh, the duct heater we're trying to look for specific types of triggers in here it's going to tell us okay uh, let's see here all right do I see anything that tells me about the being within uh, that application no I don't see nothing in the duct heaters so maybe I'm trying to worry about clearance okay location all right so maybe I'm dealing with that okay because I don't see any of the question if you go back to the question I don't see anything any of these answers in the question so what's the other trigger working space for the duct heater my not less than blank so we're gonna look under maybe we go under uh, working space so let's go to the code again you're never giving up okay never giving up when it comes to this and, and I'm gonna show you what you can do to reverse look up these type of things to kind of help you uh, do it oh the other thing that you might want to do just so you know is when I'm in 424 sometimes I like to go back to the actual beginning of it right here and I do what's called scanning it looking for those those triggers okay general installation uh, permit you know here I'm looking for anything combustible dust clearances uh, anything that might be a trigger in here really quickly I'm taking an exam and I'm trying to find these things and I know the answer to this one but it's it's better if we try to move through and to see where we'd go with it because that's why I wanted to go do one more when I saw the question it was on the screen I said let's do let's do this one right here okay so we're moving through and we're getting further through and you're thinking okay I'm at duct heaters didn't really help me any when it comes to the duct heater for this requirement none of these values in here help me okay so installation notice it says here sufficient clearances should maintain and it sends me to 110.26 okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to 110.26 and see what we can find out okay um, the width all right so working space of equipment the width so what was the stem of the question it was above a suspended ceiling with working here must not be less than so it is equipment so I'm going to tell you that the answer is going to be 30 inches and you'll see that it's 424.66 b2 in this code reference so this is the way to look at it now, I just knew the answer but you see that it's in 424.66 b2 if you ever run into this scenario now I, like I said I already knew the answer just don't experience but I want to show you what you can do once you have the reference so 42466 b2 you, you spent your time you marked it now let's go and go to the reference oops here we'll go to 424 and we'll go to 66 like it says now here's 66 now you notice that in the 17 code that's not there see this little dot and that's why we couldn't find it okay the reason why you couldn't find it is because it says go to 110.26 so that's why I ended up in the application so that's important for you to understand sometimes the references are going to be on the 2014 code and you're like well I don't see it what's wrong well that's when you gotta remember that these are based on the 14 code there was a change where this was actually moved over into uh, 
um, the 110.26. And most importantly, it also now is that limited space application. So that's what I want to show you real quick, just to help you. Because this one was, you know, that's why you noticed that we couldn't find it. And that's why I ended up in 110.26. But let's go down here and I want to show you. What's new to the 2017 code is right here. Limited access. See this little in? So you got limited access. Okay. Uh, and that's the, going to give you the, the ability in here. So what do you do is the width is where you're getting the 30 inches right here. But the limited access right here says where the equipment operating at 1,000 volts nominal or less to, to ground and likely to require examination, adjustment, service, and maintain while energized is required by installation instructions or functions to be located in a space with limited access. All the following shall apply. So you go down here and you'll notice that you get into an application where it says here where the equipment is installed above a lay-in ceiling now you're just going to have to understand that a lay-in ceiling is the same as what they're talking about a suspended ceiling so again common things that we kind of learn in the trade uh, that you'll learn through the, your experience but here you see that and when it talks about the width here it talks about 30 inches. In the 2014 code, there was actually a, a, a section dot 66 that dealt with the duct heater above the space and all that. Now it's been incorporated into this rule here. Okay. So that's why that's a little tricky, but here's the beauty of it. It takes your time to maneuver through these things. That's why when I saw this one, I said, you know, we're going to do this one because this is the one that's, that's going to take you somewhere and it's going to be different than what's listed on the exam question online. Okay, so look, let's bring it back to me a little bit or to at least to the intro. They're not always going to be easy, but use that knowledge, use that examination skill, um, dissect the question, look for the root or the trigger uh, and find it that way. Um, take all these online questions. Remember, go to electrician exam. Uh, actually, I'm, I can't remember the name of it. So we'll go back to it so I can make sure I get it right for you. It's electricianexampracticetests.com. That's with an S on the end. And you'll get all of these. I mean, look at all these. I'll go to practice tests right here. It just starts right in. Okay, for example, a measure is used to measure which of the following. Okay, so this is a journeyman test here. Okay, what is a measure supposed to help you do? Well, you know what? You know, ooh, what am I using a, a measure for? Oh, well, I'm mega. Let's go. Boom. Okay. Insulation resistance. Okay. It doesn't say insulation resistance there, but you know, like with, you know, of the choices, this is the best option. Uh, what else they got? So let's look at some theory. You have some theory questions and look at all of them over here. Oh my God. You should be able, if you want to know what the atomic structure is, boom, click on that. And it says, uh, it says, which of the following materials have large enough, uh, larger energy gaps between conductive bands and Valence bands, insulators, semiconductors, conductors, all materials have the same energy bands. Okay, so when you look at all this type and you say, well, which of the following are the largest energy gaps within here uh, with the conductive bands of the valence band? Well, you know, I don't think that it has anything to do with this, so um, the conductors, so I'm going to say, well, insulator. Okay, correct. But you can use deductive reasoning to move through all of these. Okay, so it's just a neat resource. And it's free, and you ought to be utilizing it. Okay, um, if you want to go down, let's see here, circuit breaker quiz. Love it. Let's look at a circuit breaker quiz. Which of the following circuit breaker requires the least maintenance? Oil, vacuum, air blast circuit breaker, uh, SF6 circuit breaker. I have no idea. But look at here. This is what it's going to help you do. I'm going to take the oil because I'm thinking oil would need the less maintenance. Okay, I'm incorrect. It's a vacuum circuit breaker. So you're saying, how is this benefiting me? Well, here's what you could do. You could now take that vacuum circuit breaker. I could go up here and do the internet search. And, and I could go in here. And let me go back and see what it was. Vacuum circuit breaker. And I could type in here a vacuum. I think it's, uh, I don't, I'm not even sure how to spell vacuum here. 1C. Okay. Uh, 
V-A-C-U-M of Circuit Breaker and do a search on it. And what is it? A vacuum circuit breaker is a kind of circuit breaker that has arc quenching where the arc quenching takes place in a vacuum medium. Okay? All right, so you're learning a little bit about it. That's the whole beauty of it is being able to learn. I know you're seeing you're not seeing all of the screen. I apologize. It's because of the way, you know, there you go. So there you get to see all of the screen now uh, in, in the question. So, I mean, that's just utilizing online, being able to do it. Okay. So let's go back to the, the question. And now I'm going to kind of maneuver it back over here so you can see everything. So it's really just a, a resource to help you be able to utilize, you know, three phase questions. You have three phase questions. Click on the three phase question. Polyphase. So uh, an underground, an ungrounded system, when the earth phase uh, volts occurs in one phase and the three, uh, one phase of the three phase for the voltage levels in the other two healthy phases will, and what's, you know, will increase, decrease, how will it do? Okay. Well, let's say it increased by this square root of three times. That's correct. But if you had a ch chosen any of the other ones, then you could have Googled this. Another thing you could have done is you could have copied this question like this. Okay. Watch this. Copy this question. Right click on it. Copy it. Go over here. Go to Google. And you could type it in Google and paste it. And hit enter. And see what you get. You'll get a lot of references here. I don't know if you can see all that. Yeah, you can't see it all. So I'll move it so that you can. So here, frequently asked questions. Um, see how it, it talks about increases and click on any of these and you can learn. I mean, that's the whole concept of, of trying to continually learn. But again, you're here to pass an exam and those kind of questions aren't going to be on an exam. I get it. So. Uh, we're focused on doing these. So again, practice tests, code tests. Here you can click on that. Uh, again, they're going to be on 2014, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, you feel like you got a weakness in motors? Okay. Well, let's see if we got one for motors. I'm going down here. There you go, motors. There you go. Practice it. A continuous duty motor rating more than one horsepower with a marked surge factor of a 1.15 or greater, or with a marked temperature rise of 40%, uh, 40 degrees C or less, can carry blank overload for the extended period of time without damaging the motor. Okay, so you're going to see that that's not a trick question. Okay, uh, if you're used to motor, motor overloads, then you know to go to 430.32, and you're going to see it again. One horsepower uh, motor. So, I mean, if I, if I knew how to do that, then I would simply say, well, I could go to motors and look for overloads, and I can do that by looking at the back of the code. Or, if I know that I watched a video on motors, then I know that I can go to 430.32 here, and then I'm gonna go down to .32, because that's dealing with overloads here. And it didn't say anything about holding or not holding, Okay, so here we're dealing with more than one horsepower. Okay, so you know all those. Here you go, one or less. Okay, so here's all of our different equations, and, and you can get everything. So let's you go back to the question, and it says continuous duty motor rated at more than one. Okay, so we're dealing with more than one. All right. And we got that 115 or greater, whatever. What's the overload? So it didn't say anything about not being able to hold it. So I'm going to use the first value. So I'm going to go back here, go here. And it says, what am I going to do? More than one horsepower, I'm going to use, okay, 1A through A4. I'm going to go down here. And here we go. Here's A1 right here. Okay. Motor with a mark service vector of... 115 or greater or 40 C or less seems like the additional amount is 25% over the normal 100 so I'm gonna go back and what of my question I'm gonna go 25% and that's the correct answer don't get tricked by this question okay 
you ought to know that it doesn't say 125%. 100% is a given. This is the additional, okay, extended period, okay? All right, so that, that's the kind of the questions. Now, check this out. It says a separate overload shall be selected to uh, shall be selected to trip or shall be rated no more than blank of the two horsepower motor having a service factor 115 or greater. Okay, so this is dealing with the separate. Same kind of question. Okay. Again, we already answered this one. It's 430.32A1. It's just another way to present the question. All right. It didn't say anything about not being able to hold. It did. It is over one, so that's a two horsepower. So you know you kind of move through it. Just remember that that you're dealing with um, the nameplate. You're dealing with overloads. You're dealing with the nameplate value and not the value that's in the back of the 430.247, 248, and 250 dealing with the full load current. Okay. Just remember that. Anyway, that's enough for today, guys. That's how you dissect it. Use these resources. I'm going to put a link to them down in the description. Hopefully that helps you navigate through. Uh, obviously, in this question here, um, we would have dissected this to be overload device. Okay. And, you know, and, and we're obviously dealing with a motor because we're dealing with overloads and you should need to understand that. But if I were to go to the NEC, just so we can round this out, because I don't want anybody to say I didn't do it. If you didn't know to go to 32, then you go down here to motors. I just want to make sure we, we, we cover everything. I think you get the gist of it by now. But let's go to motors. Here's the motors. And we're talking about overload protection right there. It's part three, okay? Do we have anything else that might help us? Well, let's go down and look, because we're gonna write that down, okay? We write that down on the paper. Uh, then we go down and see if there's anything else. Overload protection, that's what the question was about. Three, 430.32A, you're writing that down. You're writing down 430.32C. These are areas you're gonna jump to. They're all in the right in the same area, okay? I'm gonna continue to go down and see if there's anything else here that's going to benefit me, and it's not. Okay, we're not talking about overcurrent protection, we're talking about overload. So if I went to 430.32a, saved me some time. Uh, I remember I wrote it down on my paper, my little scratch paper, and I go here and I'm going to hit them real quick. And then that's when I'm going to go down to 32. And when I get there, I'm going to remember to do what I call scanning. And I'm dealing with those motors. We knew that that motor was a two horsepower so it's definitely more than one so we went to here and we said well more than one got it each motor continuous duty did the question say continuous duty okay didn't really say continuous duty so always assume it's continuous duty unless they say otherwise so go to the code here it says and I'm going to use 430.32 a1 through a4 and see this said separate overload device what did that say in the question separate overload device see these triggers these all these these are triggers for you all right so uh, and you'll get quicker at it trust me and so you're here and you're in a1 so you go down to a1 and you say okay it's dealing with a motor with a 1.15 or greater and it's dealing with a motor's temperature of 40 degrees c or less then it's 125 Okay, and that's what we're going to use there. And it's just really that simple. So hopefully you got something out of this, guys. And it's that's how you dissect a question. Use this online resource. I will also give a link to our exam prep courses if you want to pay for them, because in those you'll get courses that teach you how to highlight things in the code, how to navigate things in the code. And if you really need to pass that exam, you can use that course. And it has an exam quiz in there that has over 600 questions and every time you do the test each time it's new questions and you can time yourself you need to have a little timer uh, and help yourself we took our time here in order to be able to teach you how to do it but really time yourself practice go through there look at the question look at the stem try to find the root or the target in there and see if that helps you out use the index um, get used to using the index get used to back and forth you're gonna find that when you do this and you do these online then when you go to take the exam 
you're going to find that a lot of the questions, you're going to do that wave technique that I talk about in my podcast about the down and dirty for preparing for an exam. You're going to find out that a lot of those questions you can answer without even looking up because you're maneuvering through the code book. You're getting good at it. And that's why you want to do all these questions. Not so much because you want to go to the index every time. You're doing this so you can jump back and forth through the code and learn something in the code. That's the only way you're going to learn it. So do your index cards. I think you should have index cards where you take these index cards and on one side of the blank index card you write Article 210. On the other side you put branch circuits. Um, you do that for panel boards. You write Article 408 on one side. On the other side you do panel board, switch board, switch gear. Uh, I think you do that. And that's how you, when you look at the card, you start to train yourself. When you're dealing with ampacities, you know that you got to deal in 31015B16. So right on one side, 0 to 2000 volt um, and uh, of uh, the ampacity values, okay? Write that down, what table? And on the other side, you put 31015B16. That's gonna help you remember, okay? And I think it's really important to do that, um, to test yourself, constantly test yourself. You know what, it's not just about getting the license. Keep on going, man, keep on learning. The less times you get failed is because you understand the National Electrical Code. You might understand it a lot better than the inspector. And maybe you can even educate the inspector. Maybe you both can have a good educational moment. But that's what we're at. You know, again, electricity can get boring. And if you got to keep reinventing it, I love being a master electrician. I'm a master electrician in multiple states. If I move to another state, I'm going to be a master electrician in that state. Um, that's my goal. And uh, I'm, I'm not really planning on moving anymore. But that's the concept, right? Learn as much as you can, and that's what this program is all about. So hopefully you get something out of this. We call this exam prep, prep root review, it, root reviewing the questions. So hopefully you got something out of it. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.